Dennis M.C. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Okay, it's open for a buck. Okay, Vince, I'm in. Well, I'll see it. Come on, Carter, deal him like you knew how. Listen to the Maharaja of the mess hall. How many cards? I'll take three. Uh, give me two. And I'll play these. Cost you two clams to see him. Okay, Vince, I'll keep you honest. That's it for me. Read him and weep, sucker. Two pair, aces and jacks. <laughs> Not so fast, sport. I got 15. What? Three little fives. <laughs> Looks like he outdrew you, Sarge. You should only have such luck with your chow, hacker. We'd be eating like kings. I don't know about my chow, but I just cooked your goose. <laughs> cooked this goose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sergeant, I got it. Huh? Don't you remember? You told me to stop by and pick up your uniform at the dry cleaners. Dry cleaners? He's already been taken to the cleaners, haven't you, Vince? <laughs> okay, Pyle, just hang in the locker. Well, wait a minute, let's see what kind of work they did. <laughs> that's not my uniform, that's skirt. It's a woman's. Why don't you try it on, Vince? Maybe it'll change your luck. <laughs> Can't you ever do anything right? I gave you a simple little job. Go over to the cleaners and pick up my uniform. Was that too much for that peanut brain of yours to absorb? Well, I'm sorry about that, Sergeant, but it said Sergeant Carter on the bill. It did? Where? You're right, Pyle, it did. It says Carter, all right. Sergeant Gloria Carter. <laughs> well, I'll be. Gloria Carter. Well, I'm sorry, Sergeant. Knock Vince. it off, Pyle. Just double time over to that dry cleaners and pick up my uniform. Now, is that clear or should I write it down? Go! Right, Sergeant. I can't imagine how a mistake like that happened. Imagine me. Move, 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 move! <laughs> well, the nitwits. You know, I used to have plans of being a 30 year man. But with a guy like Pyle in my outfit, I don't know. Any day now, any day. Yeah. Well, as my old mess sergeant used to say, no matter how you stir the pot, you only get out of it what you put into it. Huh? What is that supposed to mean? What's it supposed to mean? Well, I was just saying a guy like Pyle needs a special attention, and he's just not getting it. Can you open, boy? Hold on, Hacker. What kind of attention ain't he getting? What kind? Uh, understanding. You know, a, a guy that knows how to work with him. And it's just possible, Vince, that you don't know how to handle him. And can you open? I don't know how to handle him. Well, what are you hitting at, Hacker? That you know how to handle it? Well, I've had guys like Pyle in my mess hall. Some even worse. I remember one bird brain. He couldn't even handle a can opener. But I worked with him, gave him a little encouragement, and then within one week, one week, he was able to prepare a meal for the whole company. Well, what do you know, Boyle? We got a miracle worker sitting here. A regular miracle worker. Uh, can we play? And what are you suggesting, Hacker? That you can work a miracle with Pyle, too? No miracle, Vince. Just the right approach. You see, the trouble with you is, is you have no tact. I got no what? A tact. Tact. You see, the difference between us is, is that I have feelings for human beings. And let's face it, Vince, you don't. As a matter of fact, sometimes you are downright crude. Crude? <laughs> Who are you calling crude? You, I'm calling you uh, crude. Fellas, please, can you, we You play? know what I ought to do? I ought to turn him over to you. That's right, you got all that tact and feeling for people. I ought to give him to you as a present. Why don't you? I couldn't do any worse for them than you had. Okay, he's yours. And while we're at it, suppose we put a little bet on it. A bet? Who said anything about a bet? Well, you're the big genius that took some goof up and had him turn it out a meal. There's no reason you can't do the same thing with Pyle, is it? Pyle? Cook a meal? Yeah, he's pretty big with the talk, ain't he, boy, huh? But when it comes to putting up the dough... Okay, <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I did it with one knucklehead, I can do it with another. You mean you're gonna take Pyle on? Yeah, I'll take him on, just to prove something to you, Vince. Okay, how much? You tell me. Well, since you're loaded down with tact, shall we say 50? All right, let's say 50. But remember, I'm not promising Pyle will be the head chef at the Waldorf. He'll just be able to prepare a meal by himself. You heard him, you heard him. 50 bucks. By this time next week, Pyle cooks a meal all on his own, right, Hacker? Right, right, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, and just one more little thing. About that meal, Hacker, we have to live after it. <laughs> the missile? You mean you're putting me on KP? Oh, no, pal. This has nothing to do with KP. You see, there's this new regulation that all Marines have to be able to double up in different jobs, you know, in case of emergency. So, knowing how you love to eat, I thought you'd be perfect for the kitchen. Well, does this mean that I'm going to be over there all the time? You're not trying to get rid of me, are you, Sergeant? Oh, I know, pal. How could you think such a thing? This is just a temporary assignment for a week. And what a great opportunity. Really? Oh, sure. Everybody wanted the job. But Sergeant Hacker asked for you special. He did? Well, I sure hope I'm worthy of the job. Oh, you are, pal. You are. You're going to be just great. The fact is, I've got every confidence in the world in you. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Knowing that you feel that way about it, I'm gonna go over there to the mess hall tomorrow and give it everything I've got. Good, good boy. <laughs> you will? <laughs> yeah, well, remember, pal, we're all only human, and sometimes even the best of us make mistakes. <laughs> you worry, Sergeant. I won't let you down. Uh, yeah, well, whatever you do, pal, just be yourself, and everything will work out fine. How do you mean that? I mean... Don't do anything to change the way you are. I mean, just be yourself. <laughs> All right, snap it up in there. Now we're a little behind this morning. Pile, where's Pile? He was here a minute ago. Pile! Here I am, Sergeant. I had to go change my hat. The other one was kind of loose, and I didn't want it to fall into breakfast. Yeah, fine, Pile, fine. But stay close. Stay real close. Now, you're my number one assistant, and I'm counting on you. Well, I sure appreciate that, Sergeant. And believe me, I'm gonna do my best. I mean, you won't be sorry for all the faith and trust you have in me. Yeah, yeah, I'll... yeah, sure, pal. Now, let's see. I want to put you on something nice and simple. Uh, ah, aha, uh -huh. there it is. Now, since this is your first day in the kitchen, I'm gonna put you on oatmeal. You mean I'm gonna get to make the oatmeal? My aunt had a recipe for no, oatmeal. No, no, pal, no. The oatmeal's all ready to go. You see, the ingredients are all in there cooking away. Now, all you have to do is stir. Now, watch me. Now, you see, that's all there is to it. You just make circles. Nice, round circles. Now, why don't you try it, pal? Okay. Like this? All right, that's perfect. Just perfect. I've never seen anybody take the stirring just like that. Thank you, Sergeant. Just one question, though. Is it okay if I change directions and go like this? Sure, anything you want, pal. Backwards, forwards, sideways. Can I make numbers and X's like a figure eight? Sure, pal. X's, numbers, doodles, anything you want. But just keep stirring. Now, I'm going to go out and check on the steam tables. If you need anything, just call me. Right, Sergeant. You go about your business and just leave the oatmeal to me. Say, that's a pretty heavy load you got there. Let me give you some help. There you go. Boy, this is way too big a bundle for any one man. Shazam! Oatmeal is boiling over. Yeah, sure it's boiling over. Why is it boiling over? Because you stopped stirring. You did stop stirring, didn't you, Pyle? Yes, Sergeant. I got no excuse. I left my post. Oh, I feel just terrible. Yeah, well, get him up. Just get him up. I will, Sergeant. I'll get him up. Right away, right away. You just wait right here. Wow, what happened here? What does it look like? Well, we better do something fast, Sergeant. The guys are lining up for chow. What are we going to do about the oatmeal? Yeah, well, we just have to give them what's left. That's all. Get a rag and start cleaning it up. And the rest of you, move around there. Okay, come on, keep it moving there. I mean, that's it? Come on, come on, stop with the jokes. Put something in there. Come on, Carter, move it along. You're holding up the line. What do you mean? How are you guys putting out food for canaries? You're feeding Marines. Come on, let's go. Look, Carter, you got more than enough. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Besides, we've been wasting too much food in this mess hall, and I'm calling a halt to it. Hold on, Hacker. What are you talking about? There's nothing in there. Waste not, want not. Now move it. I don't know. There's something phony going on around here. Hey, Sergeant Hacker, I finished all my mopping. I cleaned up the whole mess. 
Hey, Sergeant Carter. Boy, when oatmeal boils over, it really boils over. Yeah, well, okay, Pop. Come I on, let's get... Know. It boiled over? We're out of oatmeal because of you, our pile. That's right, Sergeant. It's all my fault. I take full responsibility. It's just like I was telling Sergeant Hacker. Yeah, okay, Pop. Come on, back in the kitchen. We got a lot of work to do. Fill up those salt shakers, huh? Right, Sergeant. Sure hope you enjoy the oatmeal, Sergeant, or what's left of it. Oh, I will. I will. I'll enjoy it like it was a $50 dinner. Ah, <laughs> Okay, now, Pyle, like I told you, we're gonna forget all about what happened at breakfast. We're gonna start fresh. We're gonna pretend that you've never been in this kitchen before, all right? Okay, Sergeant. Okay. Now, you see, what we gotta do, Pyle, is start from the beginning. We gotta get you acquainted with all the fundamentals here. And by the time we're through, you're gonna be able to cook a meal all by yourself. Golly, Sergeant. Me cook a meal by myself? Well, I appreciate your faith in me, Sergeant, but I don't think I could ever do that. Confidence, pile. Confidence. Now, let's take a reading on the stuff we're going to be using, all right? Well, now, first of all, this is a stove. Oh, I already need that. Mm. Well, it never hurts to be sure. Now, repeat after me. Uh, skillet. Skillet. All right. Uh, chopping block. Chopping block. Good. Soup ladle. Soup ladle. Uh, potato masher. Potato masher. Meat cleaver. Meat cleaver. Uh, I think that's about enough for a start. Now, let's review what we learned, shall we? Uh, Skillet. Good. Uh, Soup ladle. Very good. Uh, oh. Uh, you just told me. Now, don't tell me, don't tell me. Me, 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 me. Oh, I know. Me. No, meat axe, meat axe. Oh, no, it's not a meat axe. It's a meat cleaver, a cleaver. Now, pay attention, Parley. You'll never learn to cook. Now, get this through your head. <gasps> <laughs> What's going on here? That cleaver hacker, what are you trying to do? Just because he ruined the oatmeal? Oh, uh, knock it off, Carter. Sergeant Hacker here was giving me a cooking lesson. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, that'll be off for the first lesson, Pyle. Uh, why don't you go take a break? Well, thank you, Sergeant, and I sure am enjoying the course. You just call me when you get ready for another class. <laughs> Chopping blocks, meat cleaver. Come on, Charlie, stop kidding around. Why don't you admit he's impossible and toss in the dish towel? I got till Friday. That's all I'm saying. You're beginning to get the problem, buddy boy? You still think all Pyle needs is the right approach? Huh? Huh? I got till Friday. That's all I'm saying. Well, just remember, Hacker, by Friday, he fixes that meal or you're out to 50. Just don't you worry about him. I still say all he needs is a little patience and encouragement, which is what I'm giving him, and he'll be fine, just fine. <laughs> serving up the noon chow. Hey, Sergeant Carter, Corporal Ball, would you care for some mashed potatoes? Oh, sure, pile. Load me up. I'll take some, too, pile. Hey, Sergeant, guess what? Huh? What's the matter, pile? I made these mashed potatoes myself. You did? No kidding. Hey, boy, you hear that? Pile made the mashed potatoes. Shh, shh. I don't want the other cooks to hear. They'll think I'm pushing myself. <laughs> oh, sure, pile, sure. They look delicious. You did a great job. Thank you, Sergeant. I can hardly wait for you to taste them. Yeah, well, uh, we can hardly wait either. Right, Boyle? <laughs> Let me know what you think. If you want seconds, there's plenty more. Hey, Vince. You think Pyle really made these potatoes by himself? I don't know. But here's where we'd find out. He made him. 
Hacker! Oh, Mad Sergeant Hacker! What do you want, Carter? I'm busy. I understand that Pyle made these potatoes all by himself. That's right. Pyle made them. So what? What's wrong with them? Well, Boyle and me was just wondering about the recipe. Did he use cement or wallpaper paste? <laughs> <laughs> I had everything laid out for him. I even stood over him while he mixed the ingredients. How could he have? Wait a minute. I remember. I went back to the reefer for some more milk. But I couldn't have been gone more than 45 seconds. He couldn't have. Oh, yes, he could, Hacker. Leaving Pyle alone for 45 seconds is inviting disaster. <laughs> no. It's impossible. It can't be. You know, Hacker, I almost feel sorry for you. If I was a real nice guy, I'd let you off the hook and call off the bed. But I'm not a nice guy, and you got a big mouth, so the bed's still on. He cooks the meal on Friday, which is tomorrow, is it not? <laughs> yes, sir, Boyle, this is it. D-Day, dinner day. Fifty big ones coming my way. Five-O. <laughs> uh, you sound awful confident, Sarge. You that positive Pyle's gonna blow the meal? I'll tell you how positive I am. I'm gonna call that fancy French joint in town, La Petit Chateau, and make a dinner reservation for Bunny and me. We got a lot of celebrating to do. <laughs> you sent for me, sir? Yes, Sergeant. We just received word from the airstrip that Colonel Driscoll arrived from San Francisco, and we'll be eating at your mess this noon. I just thought you ought to know. Yes, sir. Well, uh, I'll cook up some T-bone steaks, uh, a couple of baked potatoes. Oh, loose, no, uh, no, nothing special. What are you serving the men? Uh, well, the uh, menu calls for salmon croquettes, sir, but I'm sure that you and the Colonel would like something a little more elaborate. I'm so... afraid you don't understand, Sergeant. Colonel Driscoll makes it a policy to always eat what the men are eating, so salmon croquettes will be fine. Uh, but, but, sir, the croquettes, you see, I'm not sure about that. I'm, uh, what I mean is, they, they may not come out Look, the way we... I know this is short notice, Sergeant. But whatever you have will be fine. That'll be all. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, Carter, it's all over. The bet's off. I gotta get over the mess hall. Huh? Colonel Driscoll's on the post. He's gonna eat at our mess hall. Colonel Driscoll's gonna eat Pyle's cooking? That's very funny. <laughs> oh, yeah? How funny is it gonna be when he tastes the cooking and orders an investigation? What do you mean? Look, there's gotta be an investigation. The guys, they just beef a little. But the Colonel will order an investigation. Huh? Can't you see it's got to come out that that miserable meal is the result of a personal bet between you and me? You'll be in as much trouble as me. So what do you suggest? Our only hope is to get over there and doctor up Pyle's meal before the colonel shows. Well, come on, let's go. Yeah. Wait a minute. What if Pyle's cooking can't be fixed? I don't know. We'll do something. We'll send out for Chinese. <laughs> Look. You're too late. It's Colonel Driscoll with Colonel Gray. Yeah, and look who's carrying their trays. Oh, somebody trip him. Somebody <laughs> trip him, please. Oh, he's serving the meal. Vince, I can't watch anymore. Pa's handing out the napkins. Driscoll's picking up his fork. He's taking a bite. I can't watch either. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. I've been a mess sergeant for 15 years. And now to see it all go down the drain. Easy, Charlie, easy. You take it easy. All those years serving up chow in jungles, on beachheads, during air raids, in war and peace. All those years. And not once, not once was I ever called up for a bad meal. And now this is the way it all ends. And it's all your fault. My fault? My fault? Who opened his big mouth first? Who wanted Pyle to cook a meal? Yeah, but if you had to give me that static about Hacker... Ah, knock it off. What Sergeant do you mean, Hacker? knock it off? Sergeant Hacker, Sergeant Carter, the Colonel would like to see you both right away. Sergeant Hacker reporting his audit, sir. Sergeant Carter reporting his audit, sir. At ease. I understand that you two men have had something to do with the preparation of this meal. Uh, yes, sir. We uh, both share in the responsibility. Good. 
Because I just want to say that that is the best pork grinds and collard greens I have ever eaten. <laughs> Not to mention those black-eyed peas, the grits and gravy, and that cherry cobbler. Well, boys, I haven't tasted cooking like that since I was a young'un back home in Georgia. Pleasant surprise, Sergeant. I understood today's menu called for salmon croquettes. Well, I guess I'm to blame for that, sir. You see, Sergeant, when I started fixing them salmon croquettes, I couldn't make heads nor tails out of that recipe. And I knew I couldn't let the fellers go away without eating. So I just got to thinking, and shazam, it come to me. Shazam? See, I remembered those Sunday church suppers back home and how I used to watch my Aunt Martha prepare all the fixings. So I just put my memory to work, and this is it. Well, however you did it, son, it certainly was a pleasant surprise. And you deserve a lot of credit. Oh, well, thank you, Colonel, but... I can't claim all the credit, because if it hadn't been for Sergeant Hacker here and Sergeant Carter, I never could have done it. Well, now, hold it, son. You lost me there. What do you mean? Well, to be honest with you, Colonel, up to now I've been making a real mess here in the mess hall. But Sergeant Hacker here was just as patient as he could be, hardly ever raised his voice to me. All he was worried about was me making a grade. Isn't that right, Sergeant Hacker? Yeah, Pyle, that's sure. That's right. <laughs> and as for Sergeant Carter here, when I told him how bad things was going over here in the mess hall, he told me not to worry at all, said it was okay if I ruined a few meals. He said the only way to learn was by making mistakes. So you see, they deserve most of the credit. With faith and confidence like that, how could I go wrong? Well, apparently you two sergeants have a real talent for handling men, and that's good. Thank you, sir. All we can do is try. Give it our best. But, of course, with a bright boy like Pyle, you yeah, to work with, you really have no problems. Yes, sir. He's one of my favorites. Bright as they come. Only wish I had more like him. Well, Vince, all in all, I'd say we've been pretty lucky. Pretty lucky. Yeah, Pyle really came through for us, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. And speaking of coming through, uh, how about paying off? Paying off? What do you mean? Well, the bet, the bet that uh, Pyle could manage a meal all by himself. Are you kidding? You called it off, don't you remember? Oh, I called it off when I thought that I'd have to throw his meal out and cook one myself. But I didn't have to. Pyle's meal worked, so pay up. So it worked. That's no credit to you. That's cooking he learned from his Aunt Martha. If I was gonna pay anybody, I'd pay his Aunt Martha. Oh, Vince, be fair. Be fair, you be fair. You cancel out the bets off. Come on. Oh, uh, all right. Maybe you're right. You're darn right I'm right. There, you got me on a technicality. Yeah. But you gotta admit one thing. What I started out to prove, that if you show even a knucklehead like Pyle a little patience and understanding, he'll come through for you. I don't know. What do you mean? He did such a good job with lunch, I told him to go ahead and make dinner. You did. He's making dinner. Right now. Tact, Vince, tact. Just show him a little confidence and he'll come through. Why don't you admit it? I don't know. Admit it, admit it. All he needs... What's that? I don't know. Thunder? Could be a sonic boom. Oh, no, it sounded closer, like it came from down around the mess hall. The mess hall? <laughs> Sergeant Hacker, I got bad news about your stove. Admit what, Hacker? What should I admit, huh? What, 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 what? What should I admit, huh? <laughs> <laughs>